2001 Ford F-150 with a 5.4 liter engine. Customer complaint is a misfire. And first thing I want to say, I want to apologize for the quality of this video. I'm in the field right now. I'm actually at one of my garages working. Uh, I don't have my tripod, but so it's going to be a little shaky, but I think this is important to show you guys how to do this. So what we want to do, of course, first is uh, we're going to check for trouble codes and we're going to look for memory codes. And this is what we get when we're in the field. We get these vehicles that somebody's been here and cleared the trouble code. So we have a P1000 code. That's what that means. And so uh, as far as cylinder misfire goes and helping me identify what cylinder's misfiring, I'm already losing. Okay. So next thing I want to do is uh, show you where you can get misfire counters on Fords. And uh, th this having a P1000 code, it's really not going to be possible. The data is probably gone. Uh, what we want to do is we want to go, sorry, I went back too far. Um, we want to go to our generic functions. Uh, if you don't have this feature in your scan tool, you just select glo global OBD2 or generic OBD2. And what we want to pick is mode six, onboard monitored systems, mode six. From there, this being a Ford test ID 53, that's a hexadecimal number, that's not $53. Test ID 53, this gives you your misfire data, each one of these being your cylinder misfires. And you can see, if you look closely at this, there's cylinder number one, and you see a uh, value of zero, and uh, minimum value not available, maximum of zero, there's a value of zero, and it passed. So there's no misfire showing on one, two, cylinder two, cylinder three, and so on, all the way down to cylinder number eight. This is an eight cylinder engine. This is where you would find your misfire data on a Ford. The problem is when you clear the trouble codes, you've also wiped out your component parameter information. So this isn't gonna be helping me either. So we're gonna get out of here and I'm gonna show you how to do a scope test on these coils from the fuse box. So what I've done is I've uh, removed the fuse from the fuse box for all the coils. It's a 30 amp fuse in the bottom right corner of the fuse box, pretty typical of most of the Ford trucks. Uh, I've installed a uh, tester. Uh, this is basically a fuse that's modified. Uh, you can purchase these, I forget where I got that. I think aeswave.com I think is where I got that. Um, but it fits exactly where the fuse goes. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to read the amperage of the coils from the fuse box. So I have a jumper wire installed, fuse jumper of course, and I have my amp clamp connected. And what we're gonna look at is the coil current firing ramps from the fuse box. So what we wanna do, I've already set this up previously, but I'll show you how I did it. I'm gonna come down here, hit the home button. I'm gonna go back to my scope right here, scope multimeter. And I have a frozen picture of it already, but I'll show you the setup. What you want to do, knowing what kind of amp probe you're using, that this is a 20 amp setting. I'm using 100 millivolts as one amp. So my first channel, again, I apologize for the shakiness here, guys. Bear with me. First thing I want to do, I'm going to unfreeze this picture, and I'm going to show you my setups. You see channel one is actually set to um, a one volt scale. So one volt being 10 amps. If 100 millivolts is one amp, one volt would be 10 amps. So this is an amp amperage uh, setting. You can also use the um, already calibrated amp scale if you wanted to. You hit, hit the probe button and then go to uh, low amps 20. You can use it that way as well. It does not matter. Um, just personal preference. So looking at Channel one as my amperage and channel two is going to be what I'm going to be synchronizing it with because I need to know what coil is what on the screen. So channel two is going to be a primary coil voltage waveform on one particular coil. I'm going to go under the hood and show you where I'm connected for that one. All right, what we're looking at is the uh, right side of the engine. This is cylinders one, two, three, and four on the right side. Important information to know. I'm on the first coil, which is right here, and I've put a T-pin on the coil negative control wire for coil number one. Very important that you know this is coil number one that you're adapted to. As reference to our current waveforms, we need to a starting point 
to count and we're using cylinder number one. You don't need to use cylinder one, you can use any cylinder you want to, you just need to know what cylinder you're going to. In our case, cylinder number one, that's where I'm connected. Okay, so I'm uh, back inside the truck. We're looking at our, our two channels. Ch channel one being the current waveform for all of the coils and channel two being the coil number one primary voltage waveform. So I'm gonna start the truck. And what I wanna do is I wanna pick a time base that's, that's pretty small right now. I wanna see some detail. It's important to know that that is cylinder number one that we're looking at right there. So I'm gonna freeze the picture. And from that point, I'm gonna hit the zoom button over here. And what this is gonna do, show me all that collected data. Let me shut the truck off for noise. All right, so well, what we wanna do from this point, is we want to look at some detail here. First thing I wanna show you is that every green trace that you see down here is the number one cylinder that's firing. That's my uh, second channel, that's my number one cylinder voltage waveform. So that's number one, that's number one, that's number one, and there should be eight cylinders in between, there is. And what we wanna do is look at some detail now. And we'll zoom in and we'll Take a look at the one we don't like. Get this out of the way. Scroll my data. And this is my guy I don't like. This guy right there, I don't like him. Zoom in on that. And what you're looking at is a coil with no turn on oscillations. So you see no activity. You see no activity in here. See no activity here or here. This is a shorted secondary winding. Classic view, shorted secondary winding. This is a unique system Ford uses. The reason you have tri a triple pulse here is this is a multi-strike ignition system. Idle and low speeds, you're gonna have multiple uh, discharges of that coil at top dead center. So don't worry too much about that for what I'm doing right now I want to show you what a good one should look like that is not a good one Let me show you a good one and you'll see the difference in what I'm talking about You see the nice ramp effect we have here. Do you see some activity here some oscillations on each of these turn-ons? That's what we want to see those are good ones. I'll let you see a couple of them here. That's a good one good one that's good. That's okay. There's our bad one again. Let's see if I get that on the screen. It's tough to do one handed here, guys. All right, there it was right there. Okay, there's our bad cylinder. Now we gotta figure out which one that is. So again, this is the importance of the second channel underneath. So I'm gonna zoom back out. Keep in mind that this is cylinder number one, the green trace, that's cylinder number, number one right there. Cylinder number one right there. That's cylinder number one right there. So we need the firing order now. So we use the tool to help us. I'm not gonna go in Mitchell and look it up. I'm gonna hit my home button down at the bottom. I'm gonna to go to my component tests. I've already entered the information. Component tests, ignition testing, component information, that's where I went, and I got the firing order right here. And the firing order says 137-26-548, okay? So go back out of here, hit the home button, go back to my scope, my pattern's still saved, and so I know that this is one, get my paper. Again, sorry guys, this is really hard to do. Uh, this is number one, this is number three, this is number seven, this is number two. So one, three, seven, two, six, five, four, eight. Let's do that again. One, three, seven, 
two, six, five, four, eight. Number five is the guy we don't like. That's my guy right there. I don't like him. Zoom back in on that to show it to you. There's your bad coil. Got a number five cylinder, shorted secondary winding condition. This could also be a shorted plug. A shorted plug would do the same thing, but the fact is we've identified the cylinder misfire from the fuse box using a scope and a low amp probe. For further info on coil current ramping, uh, check out my book. It's on my website, www.autocomputerstroubleshooting.com. And uh, this would be in, I believe it's section 21 or 22 in my book, which is no start, no spark diagnosis. I go through a lot more of this coil current ramping. Thanks a lot, guys.